إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate, the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The title of our khutbah today is Be Careful of Sunday School Mentality. A message to the parents. I repeat, be careful of Sunday School Mentality. What does it mean? Actually, it's a new terminology for me. I have just learned this terminology yesterday. I decided immediately to make the khutbah on this <laughs> idea. I was attending a meeting in a private Islamic school. So one of the teachers who are, was giving a speech, he asked the audience who happened to be the parents of the students, do you know what is the Sunday school mentality, none of us <laughs> realized that. So he said, no, what does it mean? He said, 
Sunday school mentality, this, the teacher himself, he was, you know, grown and raised in this country, and now he's an Islamic <laughs> studies teacher. From his experience, he says, the Sunday school mentality is the following. It's where some parents, for whatever reason, whether they have the ability or they don't have, they send their kids to public schools. And on Sunday, they send their kids, like many of us, to Sunday school, which could be one class in Arabic, which could be one class in Quran, which could be just one class in Islamic studies. The fact that they sent their kids for one hour has to do with Deen, Quran, or Arabic, they have the full satisfaction that they have done their job and everything is shukar ala loz. You know shukar ala loz? Everything is perfect, no problems, alhamdulillah, everything is okay. No problem the fact that he is exposed 24 seven to the public school system, no problem what happens in the street, but alhamdulillah, 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 he goes to Sunday school <laughs> for one hour of Arabic. But no problem with 40 hours of brainwashing in public system. No problem, but one hour in Islamic study. This is the idea that he was telling us about, to say, he wanted to tell us, please, as parents, be careful. Don't think the fact, the fact that you are sending your kids to Islamic school, your job is finished. It's not our job at the school. He was speaking on behalf of Islamic school. Telling us, please, we just complete your job and many other things. So don't deal with us. So this pushed me to make the khutbah. I'm warning myself, my respected brothers and sisters, please be careful of this Sunday school mentality, <laughs> which could be applicable, you know, relatively on all of us with different levels. Some of us 90%, some of us who are suffering of this complex, I call it complex, uqda, okay? Because it's, it, it, it has it with, uh, to do with psychology, at least in my conviction. I will pause now, I will go to my experience back in my country. Back in my country, you know, I myself, I'm a teacher, I'm a lecturer, I'm a university professor. So I spend part of my time as a teacher at private schools. Then university lecturer, then university professor. So I since that all of my time in education and teaching. So I witnessed the following phenomena back in my country, in an Arab Muslim country. So I will recall this experience. I will highlight it. I will use it just to explain the dangerous philosophy that some of us might be falling in. Now, I did witness heavily from inside the system back that a group of well-established financially people, high, highly wealthy, classy people back in my country. Now, you will see the mother, for example, she does not wear the hijab. Actually, it's not just she does not wear the hijab. Full makeup, short skirts. The father and the mother, both of them, they drink alcohol. Both of them, I know some of them personally, they go to Mixed swimming pool with bikini. No problem at all with hugging, kissing, mixed parties. However, they do their best to send their kids to Islamic schools. Wallahi. Wallahi. I myself, I was about, you know, your mind tells you, please, please, please let me blown. Because, I mean, this does not <laughs> fit with that. <laughs> By the way, they do their best to send to Islamic schools. Sometimes they don't pray. Short skirts, full makeup, kissing, hugging, bikini, swimming pool, drinking alcohol. <laughs> but Islamic school. So I used, I, I did my best to try to analyze this phenomenon. <laughs> my personal analysis. I can't force anyone to accept it, but I'm fully convinced with it. I want to share it with you. Why those people do this thing, in my own words, I believe, as a human beings, part of the by default way that Allah created us, we have the 
self-defense mechanism that Allah has created within us, generally, to protect ourselves from anything. Sometimes we misuse the self-defense mechanism, psychologically, and from faith point of view. So, I'm a Muslim. In theory, I would love to be in the Jannah, which is our, uh, the, the, the dream of all of us. Type. I'm a wealthy person. I have a lot of desires. I have a lot of access. And I don't want to lose the prestige, the desire now. I want to enjoy swimming pools. I want to enjoy sitting with our partners, our business, millions, money talks. So I can't say, sorry, I don't drink. No, 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 no. This will cause me losing a lot of bargains. So I don't want. But at the same time, I have this kind of feeling that, okay, so I don't want my kids to be lost. Like the father who's smoking, but he's doing his best. Not to let his kids smoke, subhanAllah. So you realize that smoking is a big mistake. Yes, but I don't want my kids, subhanAllah. If you don't want your kids, please control yourself. You yourself don't be a child. <laughs> don't use a child this way. You stop, then ask others. I'm sorry for that. This is a common sense. Don't ask. <laughs> Children, don't do what you say. They do what they see. <laughs> anyway. Going back to my analysis. So it seems to me at least, those people, they started doing what? They want just to get rid of this kind of the conscious, you know? When, when, when they want to go to sleep, if, 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 Allah will send a message. Hey, you are doing something. He wants to use something. Alhamdulillah, Islamic school. I send them to Islamic school. Alhamdulillah, I have something to do with Islam. So psychologically, that's an indirect self-defense mechanism that Alhamdulillah I'm doing, which is applicable on some of Muslims. They do 10 haram things deliberately, but they do their best not to, for example, not to miss fasting Ramadan. I'm analyzing psychologically now. They do their best. Tayyip. You are a multimillionaire. Can you stop dealing with riba definitely? Multimillionaire. You, you can, you can. You know, I don't want. So he's just keeping this kind of forte anib al-damir, just to do it. From one angle, you might say, Shaykh, ittaqillah, may Allah accept from him. No, if everyone does all of these mixed things, we say just, mashallah, jazakallah khair. Thank you, sister. No problem the fact that you are swimming in bikini with the colleagues of your father. No problem that you are drinking alcohol, but alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, you are swimming to Islamic school. This is a disaster. Islam will be destroyed. They need to listen from us that there's something. Anyway. I'm talking about the phenomena that I used to witness back. I'm recalling this phenomena to try to understand, to warn myself and respected brothers how to understand the mentality of Islamic school mentality in our Western context. Which means, now, sometimes for many reasons, we know that our kids might be in danger or they are in danger. Tayyip, am I putting the needed efforts to protect them? In theory, we all realize. But what is the percentage of us that we make efforts not to fall in the trap of Sunday school mentality? What is Sunday school mentality? 40 hours public school, one hour Islamic Sunday school, I'm satisfied that I've done my job. Sorry, brother, you have not done your job. Actually, you are falling in the trap of shortcomings to the bottom. You might be committing a crime. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that. It's my job to say that. Now let me give, me give you the following way of mathematical understanding. At least in my way. Now, you know we are living in a materialistic world. Materialistic world, capitalism. Anyone pays money is expecting a return. True or false? Money goes, money should bring Money. This is how the world works, and in specific the West. Right. I just asked Hajj Google, Qaddasallahu Sirrahu. I just asked him, can you tell me, Mr. Google, the, about the expenses on, of Ontario education system, how much they pay to take care of our kids? They told me in 2021, they, they sorry, 
Canadian educational system, last year they paid just 74 plus billion dollars. Just an education, 74 billion. Then I asked him about Ontario in specific. They told me that they have planned to spend in Ontario just for the infrastructure for the coming 10 years, $10 billion. So I'm asking myself, the one who spends has the power to put the rules. <laughs> True or false? <laughs> this is, by the way, this is a common sense, even Islamically. Why you as a man have the qiwama? One of the main, not only, the main reasons that you have the qiwama to take care to be the leader of the, so is what? Bima anfaqo. The infaq, when you, ex, you know, when you spend the money, when you go, work, suffer, earn the money, you will have a status of power, whether we loved or not. This is a reality, whatever. Private sector, the owner of the company, he puts the rules. <laughs> He owns the money. This is a fact. So we need to think scientifically now. Don't just take it for the mistaken way of understanding the barakah. Alhamdulillah, we do our best. Alhamdulillah. Wait, are you doing your best? This is the question. Now, the system used tens of billions. I don't blame them. This is how they think. They are serving their cause. You want your kid to be a believer in some certain things. X system might not offer, actually it might go completely against what you <laughs> believe. So in terms of money, they spend more. What do we spend, you know, in return? Nearly nothing. So the one who spends more has the power. So I tried it to put it in a very simple, simple, humble way. Yet, yet, even though we have this problem, but, let me help you to think, to know where is the problem and how to solve the problem. I wrote here. Now, they have teachers. Yes, we have parents. Whatever the teacher does, generally, parents are more powerful. So we have, let's say, an equal competition in this area. Teachers. Parents, by default, parents should be powerful. Let's consider it 50-50. Two, they have money and infrastructure. You have home. Yes, swimming pools, big access, theaters. But if the home really is an attractive, has the power of attraction, you can compete. But let's say 50-50. Right, third one. They have paid teachers. You have your sincerity and divine commandments. When any teacher does not receive the payments, he stops. For you, even if you are dying, you don't stop taking care of your kids. Because simply your fitra, your inner nature, your deen, your commandments will push you to work 24-7 till your soul leaves. So we have, let's think, think about this. Type. Sometimes it's, the balance is with us, sometimes it's with them, sometimes equal. We come to this serious problem now, which is related to the numbers. They have big efforts, we have less efforts, and here comes the danger. Billions, system, methodology, working, establishing, clear vision. We work on the mistaken understanding of Baraka. <laughs> So efforts, plan, it's exactly, let's understand what happens in the business mentality. Two companies. One company works according to the idea of Barakah, the mistaken way of Barakah, which means, Allah ya Sheikh, Rabbna bi Barak. Okay, we will, we will open a business. How? Regardless, Sheikh, so regardless. Someone else believes in Allah, but he knows that Allah has laid down laws in the universe. Akhid bil asbab. So he decided to take a business model, a business plan, <laughs> targets, time, targeted audience, budgets for the marketing, budget for the sales, budget for the employees, first year, expectations, obstacles, something studied. He paid for the money, made it. Now, 
the law of Allah says number two will succeed definitely and number one no will not <laughs> will no will not that's why you know, what we call al-akhir bil asbab here comes our shortage now the other part is designing planning methodology working okay it's their right but what about the rights of your kids taking in consideration the mentality of the Sunday school. The fact that, because you know, 90 up to 98% of Muslim kids, they are in public schools. The highest percentage, to the best of my information, in Canada, highest percentage in areas is 10% out of an area of that area, for example, their kids in school. 10% is the highest. So the average around 95, they are not in Islamic schools. I'm not discussing now why we don't have Islamic schools. I'm not discussing why some Islamic schools are very expensive. I'm not discussing what can I do in Canada. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just bringing the reality. The reality, majority, they are not in Islamic schools. In public. 40 hours, one hour, two, three, four. The influence, the streets, the media, social media, Everything is against what you would love your kid to be. What I'm paying, you know, just to take care, just to keep the balance normal. This is the question. But what can I do? Here comes something. Of course, we can give many, many solutions, prospective brothers and sisters. But one of the great solutions that I always keep reminding myself, I must, I'm, I'm a father of wife. <laughs> So what I'm telling you is not just a philosophy. I myself ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me, not to face this difficult possible result. One day, one of my kids, a son or a daughter, might come to me and say, okay, prove to me that hijab is fard. I think I will have a heart attack and most probably I will die. I, I, I believe, Allahu alam, okay? Or, okay, sorry daddy. Yani, I mean, there is no, no evidence that, for example, uh, you know, <laughs> the colors thing is haram. What? Okay, the influence, the brainwashing 24-7. You need to put efforts. <laughs> we are just leaving it. No. But one of the things that I always keep t saying, quality time. Quality time with your kids quality time we are not just vending machines we are not ATM fathers mothers you are not just sorry a cooker you are not just a domestic worker who cleans the house no this is the most important investment in our life after ourselves because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala priority and fusakum wa ahlikum my son la samahallah God forbid could be from the fuel of the hellfire could be I need to bring this reality as long as I'm a believer what I'm paying to protect his heart his mentality his vision his principles you know the main idea how he looks to this life I can't tell you every few minutes I'm just paying attention to the dangerous attitude by not giving the serious weight for the reality that in a few our kids are in public schools what do we do to make the balance time love sitting listening compassion being friends doing searching connecting networking our friends sometimes money is not number one i'm not saying don't work all of us we work so, all, all everyone is struggling just to have but many of us can can review their way how to spend money i'm sorry brothers you know and i know many of us we spend hours of time on social media hours men and women just ask yourself what if i'm giving you a pract practical example what if i spare third of social media checking you know most of us we just open our eyes once we just we when, when we open our eyes you know after sleeping many of us the first thing they do they check their whatsapp or social media for example many of us we do time and sometimes you don't go to the fajr till you check at 
least five to 10 or 15 minutes before you go to the washroom type, 15 minutes plus. When I come, when I finish my lunch, my dinner, whatever, sometimes just checking latest, whatever, TikTok, Instagram, something. I'm giving you a practical way. This is, this is unneeded waste of time. Take a decision before leaving this masjid. Half, third, quarter, 10, I'm not saying 100%, at the end you, are, you need sometimes to know what happens around you, okay? It's, it's a need, it became yeah, yeah, like a human culture now. But please spare part of this time, because no one of us can, I have no time. You have time. What's the evidence? We check empty social media things. Stop. What shall I do with this time? Think, educate yourself, read, go and enroll yourself in special courses, how to take care of my kids, how the language of love, Language, yes, we have languages of love. How to analyze the personality of my kids to discover in which category my son, my daughter could be. If my, he is such and such, she is such and such type, how should I be dealing with him or her? Ages, needs, psychological needs, emotional needs, problems, strategies and problem solving we need. Generally speaking, none of us has been exposed to this in our early life. Now everything is complicated in life. We need to educate. What shall I do? Everything online. Yes, the online contains a lot of filthy, dirty thing. However, it contains a lot of khair as well. Now you can sitting at your room, sparing one hour a week or five hours a week, educate yourself, reading, listening, watching, do whatever, free paid courses. What shall I do? How to educate, how to address, how to analyze, how to control, anger management, everything you need, you can. What is the point? The point, are you convinced what I'm saying? Do you have the will power to take a decision? Yes or no? Definitely yes. The problem, if you decided not to say yes. <laughs> wallahi, wallahi, Allahi, and I can, I, I, you know, I myself, who'm speaking this, I'm trying to, to speak with this, because I'm saying this, I myself used to suffer from this. Wallahi, I, I, I myself is doing this something like that. Because when I looked at myself under the umbrella of I want to check what happens around the world because I want you know, to tell the people to solve the problems. But nevertheless, I found myself just checking this and that, taking that three hours a day sometimes. Two hours a day. But what can I do with this? For example, okay? So let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. What was the title? Be aware of the Sunday school mentality. What is the core point of the whole message of today's khutbah? Sunday school mentality means don't ever accept your inner message to tell you that alhamdulillah, you've done your best, you are not falling in any shortcomings, and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, your kids definitely will be Abu Bakr and Umar and Aisha and Kada with the efforts that we are doing. No, 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 no. If you want really, to be, and let me finish with that. One, one of the basic things to start after leaving from here, inshallah. I did highlight it many times and I will repeat it, inshallah, because it is the greatest in this context. This is a message for me, for your respected self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let the guardians be as concerned for the orphans as they would if they were to die and leave their own helpless children behind. So let them be mindful of Allah, yattaqullah, of Allah and speak equitably. Be having the taqwa of Allah, do yourself to be salih. And I always, we said, we repeat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two prophets, a messenger and a prophet, Al-Khadr and Musa alayhi salam, to do an instruction working for the wall, reserving the treasure for a two, two, unaccountable legally kids sleeping at home. Their father passed away, Allahu A'lam, when? Because he was Salih. He was not clever. The Quran did not say, and we, uh, he did not say, for example, and their father, he was so nice, so cute. No. So rich, no. So genius, no. <laughs> no, Salihah. <laughs> Righteous.
In the, if you believe the law of Allah speaks about in the akramakum in the the most mindful of Allah, the most of us who fears Allah, not the cleverest, the highest IQ, the best, the most powerful. Type. إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير Respected brothers and sisters Let me just give myself your respected self final reminder Many of us might think that changing your life to the best or the style of life is very difficult والله it's not you need just to take a decision. Once the decision has been made, the real barakah will start. Allah will act, the law of Allah activates the power and motivation within yourself when you press the button. The button is qarar, a decision based on your willpower. If this has not done yet, nothing will change. Take a decision, say, Ya Allah, I will, khalas. Then Allah will help you how. Don't think about the how, by the way. <laughs> how will come easily if you said, Ya Allah, help. I won't. It's exactly like the example of the sisters who did not wear the hijab for whatever reason all of their life. They are in the age of 20, 25, all the time full makeup, all the time short skirts, all the time. Okay, they have the fear of Allah. They would love really to satisfy, you know, their deen and do it. But their style of life is completely goes against wearing the hijab. They are afraid. The people will look at them. They will say, look, she's ugly. She's not beautiful. She's not me. You know, I'll change every time my clothes. I will change. She's afraid. When she takes the decision and starts wearing the hijab in a few hours, few days, she will keep saying, Ya Allah, how I lost all of that time without feeling this kind of tranquility and happiness and peace of mind. How crazy I used to be not to take this decision very earlier. She will realize after taking a decision and all of the fears she used to have will be nothing. And this is the meaning of a shaytan yukhawufukum. Okay, don't take, be careful. No, 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 no. Sheikh, you want to fix my relation with my kids? You want me to hug my kids? Yes. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to kiss them. Sheikh, we are Arab, we don't, you know. Min, Zalam. Baby, you are not better than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the fatwa, the one who does not show sympathy, empathy, compassion to his kids. What can I do for you if Allah has taken mercy out of your heart in the hadith sahih? By not kissing your kid. So let's change, let's take a decision, let's determine our decision before leaving this time, inshallah. Allahum arhamna fawq al-ard, wa tahta al-ard, wa yawm al-ard alayka ya kareem. Allahum arham bina, wa tajawuz anna, wa arham walidina, wa walidi walidina, wa ashab al-hukuq wa al-wajibati alayna ya rabbil alameen. اللهم إنا عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة